I'd never really considered how I might feel if I received a family heirloom, let alone a timepiece. And yet, ever since I started the Watch Enthusiast London Instagram account, and later this YouTube channel, I've been feasting on the romantic notion that my watches will one day be handed down to my sons, and perhaps even, in time to come, to their own offspring. Patek Philippe made the concept of handing down a timepiece to future generations an aspiration. Patek very much applied this notion of an heirloom to the watch world, and their advert with its phrase, you never actually own a Patek Philippe, you merely take care of it for the next generation, has since become an iconic phrase, and more than that, almost a guiding principle when it comes to buying luxury watches. The advert tugs at the heartstrings, and that has the ultimate effect of easing the buying decision, emphasising the quality and the assurance that the watches, and also the Patek Philippe brand, will be around for the long haul, and in any event, for far longer than the typical human, for generations. The ads are classy. They never show the prices of the watches, but regardless, the logical side of my brain immediately thinks expensive and, and yet without even knowing the actual price. The mind calms and settles down to rest on investment and value and on sentiment. This happens almost in the blink of an eye and at just the right moment, the Patek Philippe ad brings it all to a reassuringly smart and oh, so rational conclusion by reminding you of the way in which you can begin your own tradition. Ah. Regardless of the price, for that watch, it would probably be worth it. That's ultimately the residual impression you're left with, or I am at least. It's clever how the ad reinforces a sentimental value and meaning above all else. In a way, that serves to make it that little bit easier to justify the obvious monetary cost and makes it feel worthwhile. It justifies the price because it gives the Patek Philippe watches a higher purpose beyond their function. I suppose that's what I always felt I would be doing. Not consciously, but deep down in the subconscious. I think I'm hoping that my watches will last and outlive me and, yes, provide some sort of a connection, linking past to present after I'm gone. The Patek Philippe ads have depicted fathers with sons or mothers with daughters for nearly 30 years, and the more recent iterations of their adverts have shown three generations together, illustrating the direct dynastic link and lineage, which is all the more powerful still. Personally, there's something really compelling for me to know that the watches I own will survive me, and will continue working for potentially hundreds of years, provided they receive attention. Perhaps that's why I'm a little bit of a traditionalist, and I'm slightly wary of some of the newer technology, like silicon escapements, for example, because they aren't so proven into the longer term. Watches can be stylish as opposed to being fashionable, and style has more longevity than fashion. My father recently handed me this pocket watch, which he explained belonged to his grandfather. I never knew my great-grandfather, although he was a gentleman of note. I've heard stories about him and have always known of him. This Hebdomus pocket watch is more than a 100 years old, and until the moment it was handed to me, I didn't even know it existed. So I learned that this watch was handed down initially to my father's uncle, and then following his passing, onto my father, and now onto me. And I thought I would be the one in my family to start the tradition of passing down timepieces. There was no pomp or ceremony, but nevertheless, on receipt of this watch, I felt an immediate connection. I think it was the very clear family story, that the link and the lineage that touched me. Here's a timepiece that my great-grandfather used, that he wore. I believe this was my great-grandfather's only watch. Unlike today, I imagine that simply owning a timepiece back then would have been meaningful in itself. In a way, that makes this pocket watch feel all the more special. As I say, I had no direct connection or relationship with my great-grandfather. I never met him, 
which makes my reaction to receiving this watch all the more surprising. That this watch has been faithfully passed down through our family, first to my great-grandfather's son, then on to my father and now to me, is something that I find so endearing. I've seen the Patek Philippe ads many times before, but I'm not convinced I know which came first. My awareness of the Patek ad, or my seemingly innate wish to hand down my own watches as family heirlooms, which I consider to be my honour, privilege, and perhaps even my duty. Perhaps I'm the classic example of someone who's now hardwired to feel this way because of the ever-present ads by Patek Philippe throughout my adult life. Maybe I embody precisely what the marketers envisaged over the longer term. I'm the product of their clever messaging. Or perhaps we're just hardwired this way and the Patek ad simply speaks to our inherent wishes. Funnily enough, I've recently been wondering about and have grown increasingly curious about pocket watches. However, I wasn't really sure where to begin. Someone told me that because the watch is hidden away in the waistcoat pocket for most of the time, it's less about the watch and is far more about the chain. Anyway, I don't often wear waistcoats, but on the few occasions when I do, and for the right events, I'm now looking forward to doing so, and I'm looking forward to more excuses when I can use this pocket watch. This timepiece by Hebdomus with its eight-day power reserve was award-winning, which is what the medals on the rear depict. And yet today, according to Chrono24 and eBay, its monetary value is unremarkable, likely amounting to a few hundred pounds only. If it wasn't passed down to me, I don't believe I would have picked this watch out as one to own. That's not really what this is about. It has little to do with how the watch looks, although, given the family connection, I now find myself looking at it ever more closely, and I happen to rather like what I see. My point is, I love this pocket watch. I love it for its significance and my family story. And that's in spite of the fact that I only know a basic outline of the story. I suppose in a way that makes me ever more curious still. This watch was worn and used in a totally different context, a totally different environment and in a very different time from the one I live in today. And now I'm the custodian at least until the next generation receives. When I was given the watch, almost straight away, I did something I don't believe my father ever did. I wound it up. It started ticking immediately and it has continued to keep pretty decent time ever since. There's a loud, audible and classically reassuring mechanical ticking sound. Currently this pocket watch is by my bedside and I find the ticking rather soothing as I drift off to sleep. Whilst I recall recently feeling a similar but a more diluted sense of intrigue and wonder at receiving this Longines Delirium watch from my father, the effect of knowing that this pocket watch has already been through three successive generations had a more profound impact on how I felt, a profound sense of connection to those in my family who came before me. It compounded the sentimental feeling and made it feel all the more special. Having now received this family heirloom and having experienced being the recipient, it prompted me to wonder about how my children might feel about receiving the watches that I might pass on to them. Would they feel as I do? I would love it if they did. And it also prompted me to wonder about when I'm pleased that my father chose to hand this watch down to me himself and that this moment didn't wait until after his death. I feel that we can share the enjoyment of this together. It's part of our family story and it prompted my father to dust down some old black and white photographs from a now bygone era. Interestingly, this experience has also made me ponder the value aspect, the watch's monetary worth. In a sense, it's easier for me to treasure and cherish this pocket watch and to keep it in the family precisely because its monetary value is relatively insignificant. However, if my circumstances were different and this watch was worth a very significant amount of money, perhaps like a Patek, I dare say I might feel very differently about selling the watch. Perhaps I might need to sell it. And maybe the compulsion 
to take that decision and sell the watch in itself might be emotionally distressing and at odds with my emotions, such as the power of sentimental value. Or if I simply didn't care or have any connection and wanted to cash in and enjoy the money again, I suspect that I would feel very differently about whether I should sell the watch. Perhaps as ever, I'm overthinking it. Maybe my sons won't get it, at least not in the same way that I do. Maybe they're just not yet ready. Or maybe there are already too many watches in my possession, so the boys will feel as I did when my father gifted me the Longines Ultra Thin. Or they might just receive my watches and sell them immediately. Who knows? I suppose another interesting point about this pocket watch, which I appreciate, is that until my father gave it to me, I had no idea it even existed. It was completely unexpected. My father isn't, isn't really interested in watches, certainly not like me. Conversely, my sons all know about my passion for watches and my interest in horology. As to whether they have an interest remains to be seen, but I think it's safe to say that my experience feels as though it'll be very different from the experience of my sons. Every time I look at this pocket watch, the relevance and the meaning is gently re-emphasized and reinforced. And there's something really lovely about one day passing that on to future generations to keep within the family long after I'm gone. In a similar but equally completely different way, what struck me recently is how the act of crowning a monarch in England has been going on for almost a thousand years. I find that astonishing. One can only imagine how King Charles must feel about his ancestry. That I find all this so intriguing might also go on to explain why I feel so wedded to my historic Bremont limited edition watches and Bremont's mission to revive the country's horological tradition and showcase the capabilities of British craftsmanship. The other day someone asked me which was my favourite Bremont. I have many Bremont watches, but this was an easy and immediate response. It's a longitude, because of what it stands for, the significance of its ENG movement, the story of British watchmaking and its horological past, perhaps also my relationship with the founders, and all that's because I even get on to considering its wearability, the wonderful details, and the sheer beauty of this watch front and back. Anyway, in my view, family heirlooms like this are far more than just inanimate objects. They somehow hold within them the stories, memories and emotions of generations past. They're symbolic of the enduring bond that connects us to our ancestors. They're a tribute to the past, an opportunity to celebrate the present, and they create a sense of wonder for the future. It might just be me. Maybe I'm just a romantic old watch nerd with future nostalgia. If you get this and feel the same way, or indeed if you think and feel differently, please let me know and share your thoughts. Thank you.